Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today I'd like to share something with you that it's again has to do with my personal life and something that you still don't know about me. So let's get to it. Okay, so I think that by now you must have realized that I'm a man with many passions and hobbies. Now, when I was a teenager, I used to write a lot. Now, when I say write, I mean both short stories and novels. Now, as you can see from the title, I have indeed written three novels, although I'm not sure if the first one actually qualifies as a novel, considering the fact that it was rather short-ish, but the second one was over 100 and... 30, 40 pages long, I'm talking about PDF pages. And the third one, which is the one that we will focus on in this uh, video, uh, was actually over 300 pages long. So we're talking about like really, you know, actual books. What kind of books was I, uh, was I writing and, and when did I start? Well, the first story I wrote, uh, I was 13 year old, I was 13 years old. And uh, at that time, you must understand that I was, I, I did say in the video, my life, that I wasn't particularly healthy as a teenager, as a boy. So so I would spend a lot of my time at home, so I needed to sort of find a way to kill time, if you will. And one way was of course playing video games, but another thing was indeed inventing, creating. It was it was like, for some reasons that situation, it was uh, igniting my creativity. So I wrote my first story, it was the protagonist was like, was like an elven uh, high mage, and I created this whole story, always fantasy, okay? All my stories are fantasy and they're based in medieval worlds that I myself have created. And I'll tell you more about this world that I created and I'm talking about a world filled with details like to the point because I said again I had a lot of time I had a lot of free time so I created invented this entire world with continents and over like I think it, I, I must have written the description of over 300 cities like and I'm talking about serious descriptions like and there was a lot going on and the gods and the deities and the armor and the weapons and everything but um, suffice to say that basically I wrote this first uh, story and then I started writing when I when I was 13 then I started writing again when I was 16 ish almost 17 uh, and uh, I wrote this story which was called, well in Italian is La Leggenda dei Vestigli Celesti, so in English, well, maybe we could, uh, we could translate it as, probably for what I meant at the time, I would translate it as the legend of the celestial symbols. I would translate it like this, it's not the literal translation of Vesili, but it still gives the idea, it's closer to what I meant. Uh, the protagonist being a, an 18 year old emperor in a medieval um, empire. The, uh, again, that I created of a completely fantasy world. But the third book is the one where I think um, that I think it would be interesting to talk about because it's something that I'm considering uh, publishing now. And I would be in fact interested to know if you would, would be interested in reading something I have written. So the third book is called Il Sospiro della Dea Dimenticata. And in English it means, it's translated as The Sigh of the Forgotten Goddess. It's a book that I wrote when I was again, um, I think 19 already. I was in England and in fact, something cool about this book that I said it's the biggest one and the longest one and also the most interesting that I've ever written um, is that I wrote it in medieval castles. So I was in England and I was in Wales as well at, at some times and I would look for, I would write it every Monday because Monday was my day off in England at that time and the other days I was I was working. And every Monday I would go to a, I would look for a medieval castle, for example the Conway Castle in Wales and there are many many castles in Wales anyway. So I would choose, I would castle, I would go there very early in the morning and I would spend my entire day just sitting there with my back um, leaning towards a, you know a medieval castle and this would help me you know imagine all these worlds and these creations and uh, so I wrote this book in this uh, th this way um, n not entirely in medieval castles but uh, sometimes I would write it at home as well but I did do a lot of things like that I've written it in forests I, I went to woods it, it would inspire me and uh, some something that really helped me as well increase my ability to describe these fantasy worlds, these medieval heroic fantasy worlds, was the fact that I did have quite a lot of dreams. And and as I, I think told you uh, a while ago, I do uh, have an experience 
Uh, not really very, very often, but it does happen that I do experience lucid dreams. And if you're interested in this and want to know how I have my lucid dreams, meaning dreams where I take complete control of what's going on because I know that I'm dreaming, if you're interested in this, I made a video and I'll leave a link in the description below and when I teach you how I do it. But uh, I did also explore part of these worlds in my dreams and I can say that I have been to these places. I have experienced these realities in my mind. So to cut a long story short, what does this book talk about and why am I telling you this? Well, first of all, I'm telling you this because you are my friends. Like to me, you're not just subscribers, you're not just numbers, you're not just people I don't know who watch my channel. I have created, I've built a relationship with you and in fact I always, as you know, try to um, make video response, try to make videos that you ask me to make when, whenever I can and also I try to read most of your comments and I try to respond to as many comments as I can, although of course with the current number of subscribers this thing has become a rather uh, difficult endeavour but I am still nonetheless taking at least one hour a day to read and answer comments. So. Um, the reason why I'm telling you this is that because you are my friends to me. So what that means is that my books, the only people that ever read my books, my, uh, my stories, my novels, were my family and my friends. Now, you are my friends to me, extended friends. So I would love to share some of the things that I've written with you. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about this story and uh, the, what I actually talk about in this book, The Sigh of the Forgotten Goddess, and then I'll tell you about a project that I have that uh, I that might, that if it goes well and you actually like the idea, uh, that could actually make this book available for everyone. So The Sigh of the Forgotten Goddess is a story of uh, of a hero, of course. There are many heroes in this, in this story. Um, what kind of fantasy is it? It's a high fantasy setting. So there is a lot of magic, there are gods, there are creatures and entities that populate these worlds. And although I have sort of put some races that you find in basically all fantasies, so you do find humans, you find, of course, uh, elves and that sort of things, but I have sort of edited them and personalized to my own way, trying to make this story as original as possible. In fact, I have created a lot of races and species on this a planet that are completely original to me. But interestingly enough, I have revisited this, this book three times. So I've written it all by hand the first time in England. Then I came back home uh, for around a year. I didn't touch the book again. And then I went to university. And at university, I started, since I was reading a lot of books, I felt like I wanted to uh, revisit the story. So I revisited it and I added a lot more details, descriptions. And the level of description is very, very um, profound if I if I do say so myself, and uh, particularly for weapons, armor, of course, and the styles of combat that I created, because at the end of the day, the protagonist is a swordsman. But it's an interesting story, it's an interesting legend, because he is the son of the Northern Stars, and it's what that means, and I'm trying to understand what that means, is the mystery within the book. Uh, he will, the, the story will create upon it, so there will be many things, there will be battles, com there will be, there is also war described, so you've got like knights and armies clashing against each other, political entities trying to crush each other, the dialogues, the depth of the characters, and I, I, I've taken a lot of time to model the characters, both physically and psychologically. And the plot itself is, is interesting because you see that there is everything. There is There are heroes, there are gods, there are knights, there are fighters, there are, there are difficult choices, badass characters. There is, and, and again, of course, I would like to revisit it again now uh, because I have now more knowledge about armor and weapons, so I could make it even more interesting from that point of view, so to speak. But ultimately, there is only one problem with this book, is that it's in Italian. Now, um, the Italian version I could finish off pretty soon, I think. I mean, it will still take me a few months to revisit it because I'm a perfectionist. But um, before I'm content with the book, it will take some time. But then I was thinking I could translate it all in English. The thing is, though, I would do it if I knew that a certain number of you would be interested. So, in other words, I could publish the book, I could translate the whole thing myself, I wouldn't have anyone else do it because it's my story and I know what words I would choose. So I could translate the whole thing in English, then I could publish it 
and I could uh, make it available for sale. And of course, if it is, if it depends on me, because I don't know much about this, but if it does depend on me, if the price depends on me, I would make it the cheapest possible. Of course, I would still have to make some profit to justify the many hours of time to translate the whole thing, polish a little bit the story and everything. But, but again, I think it would be also a good idea because at the moment I do have to thank my patrons, of course, because uh, my patrons, uh, I have more patrons now. And uh, I think I, I get around $400 a month from my patrons which is really helping considering what's going on now with the YouTube problems that I think you've all heard about. Ads have been removed, million of dollars have disappeared and now we YouTubers are sort of paying the price. It's These are difficult times, these are difficult times for us YouTubers and we do need to find a way to um, get on with our channels and unfortunately YouTube ads um, might not be enough in the f in the near future. At the moment, I'm still doing okay with YouTube ads. I'll be 100% honest and transparent. I'm still making, I'm not making a lot of money because of course you need to understand that the money I get on YouTube is cut for YouTube, is cut for the network, and then I need to pay 23% of taxes on it. So it's like it's cut three times, but it's still a reasonable amount and it justifies the time that I put in it. Although I'll tell you, I would do it even for free, but of course, so I, I, what I'm telling you now is that I will never close my channel. Um, even if my ad revenue becomes zero, I would still uh, make videos. Of course, I would make probably a video every two weeks in that case, because, you know, I, I would have to find a, another job, like, you know, teaching, which Again, I can do. I mean, I've got many schools that want me as a teacher, but um, I'd rather prefer just select a few and then dedicate, have more free time for the channel and, and make daily uploads and everything. This is the way I like my life now. Making YouTube videos is more fun than teaching. So um, this is why I've balanced it up this way. I do like, and at the moment I do like 70% YouTube, 30% teaching. Uh, but if the ads disappear completely, then this equilibrium might be shifted. And that would mean that I wouldn't be able to make as many videos or perhaps uh, even if I make like a video a week, it might, might not be very high quality because I might not have to, enough time to do proper research and everything. So um, in order, for that to so in order to counter that we youtubers are trying to do everything we are fighting you know we're not going down without a fight of course and in my case of course patreon supporters are really doing it a uh, really really a uh, great help because it's something that it's sure it's there and it's helping and it helps me go get on with my channel and the research and historical research but of course trying to find you know t-shirts could be another thing and i think in the future i will have uh, some t-shirts available although the first round of t-shirts around 20 to 25 t-shirts i will give away for free because i just want um, even people who can't afford them to be able to have a chance with a giveaway um, to to get a t-shirt for free but then i will make you know uh, these sort of products available for purchase of course and i think making a, i will have as I have announced before, I'm going to have a GoFundMe campaign soon for a project that otherwise wouldn't be able to do. I wouldn't be able to do because I, you know, the YouTube revenue now is not enough to make big projects. But with this project, I think that with your help, this could be realized. And then this idea of the book came to my mind and it will take months. So it's not something like, you know, tomorrow <laughs> I'm gonna, no, it will take, if I have to translate the whole thing, it might take, I don't know, eight months, nine months. It might take a lot of time, but I'm saying if it's something that you would be interested in and you'll think like, oh, that would be cool. I'd like to have a book written by Metatron with fantasy stories and everything. Then let me know, please. Because if I see many people tell me, if I see many likes, and I, if I also see many comments of people who will be like, oh, I'm excited to be right. I would love to read this. Then I would do it and of course before making the book available for sale I would take one of the 20 chapters and make it completely available for free here on YouTube so that you can actually see how I do I would actually read it for you I will make a video where I read it for you put pictures put music and then you can actually see how I write what sort of story I invent and then you could be like oh yeah I like the way he writes I'm gonna get the book or perhaps no I'm not really interested I don't like this sort of stories so this is what I wanted to share with you it's just a little piece of me um, I just I told you only a little bit about the book, but that's because I still haven't copyrighted it So first of all, I want to see if you're interested if it's something that you think it's cool Then I will start the copywriting process so I can actually share more with you here on YouTube And in the meantime, I could actually create a little short story perhaps of 10 to 15 minutes short story that I would in the create only for YouTube to make here to show you how I describe and how I create stories. I would create just create it here for you as something that you can both download and hear me uh, read for you uh, for free. 
Okay, number ones. Well, thank you very much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed this simple uh, video where we just talked a little bit about this project that I have, among many others, as I said. We've got the giveaway coming up, we've got the crowdfunding coming up. There are many things, and of course, I've got all my other series on the channel. But I am enjoying this, and I am not scared, not afraid for what's going on at the moment for YouTube. Uh, it's just that I do need to sort of prepare my armor and my shield and be ready to fight for my place here, just like all the other YouTubers who are also doing this uh, almost full-time, like, like me, who are being attacked about now by, by the conventional media. We will not go down, and with your help, we shall be unbroken. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. <laughs>